Hello, you all. I'm going to come forth and bring forth um, this word here. And the title of this is Be Fruitful and Multiply. This is where we're coming from. It, Genesis 1, 28. Uh, you can go and read these scriptures for yourself. And I'm going to read them if I'm led by the Lord to go here. But I do want to read Jeremiah 1, starting at verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Behold, I formed you in the womb. Uh, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Aha, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. For I am a, I'm just a child, Jeremiah was saying. But the Lord said, Before I formed you, I knew you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you were here, and you were before you even was a seed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you before you were even formed. So I put you here with a purpose. I had a purpose in mind before I even put you in your mother's womb. I already called you. See what I'm saying? So therefore, I use your mother as this vessel. I use your mother as the vessel to bring forth my word, to bring forth my purpose. Hallelujah. In you. So I designed you for my purpose. Hallelujah. So therefore, in that sense, his mother had to be fruitful and multiply Jeremiah. Therefore, Jeremiah had to be fruitful and multiply the word of God. So the Lord told him, before I, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you. I ordained you before you were even born. I ordained you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So let's go back. Verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So the Lord is saying, I, I, I called you. I, I anointed you. I ordained you a, 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 a prophet. I ordained you an evangelist. I ordained you as a teacher. I ordained you as a child of God. I ordained you to, to go out and fulfill my purpose. Hallelujah. I ordained you. I called you then. Hallelujah. Then I say, aha, uh -huh, Lord, behold, I cannot speak for I am a, I am a you. Hallelujah. A lot of us have that excuse, Lord. I, you know. I, I have this going on. I have that going on. I'm too young. I'm too old. You know what I'm saying? I don't have, I don't have, I don't have this and I don't have that. You see what I'm saying? But the Lord said, it doesn't matter about all of that. It don't matter your age. It don't matter, you know, your ability, your disability or whatever it may be that you think there's a hindrance to you. But I have called you in Jesus name. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am, I am young. Do not say I am young. Do not say I'm too old. Do not say I'm this and I don't have data or this and that or whatever, or my appearance or this and that or whatever. I called you for you shall go to, to uh, all to whom I send you. And wherever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his, his hand. And touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my word in your mouth. Hallelujah. I'm putting my word in your in your mouth. I'm putting the fruit. I'm putting forth this seed in your mouth that it will bring forth the fruit of God. So you can be fruitful and multiply in the things of God. Whatever I called you forth, you can be fruitful and multiply. Hallelujah. You can bring forth that seed. You can bring forth that fruit in Jesus mighty name. Only when it's done to according to the word of God, according to his purpose for your life. In Jesus' name, because some people are walking outside of their purpose. Some people are walking outside of their purpose, and that's why certain things are not being fulfilled, because you're outside of the purpose of God, and yet you're looking to be fruitful and multiply, but you're not being fruitful and multiplying, but you're being stagnated and stuck in that area. You're being you're, you're in a stillborn, uh, stillborn place right now, or you are you in this place where you where you just pushing in all these different things, but yet you're not giving birth to that situation. Yet that fruit that you're watering it you have planted the seed you're watering it you're doing all of this and you look for that seed to come up you look for that thing from that seed to sprout out but it's not coming forth why because you have put in the wrong it is not right it's not right and we're talking spiritual things here 
We know when you when you uh put a physical seed in the ground and you take care of that seed and you nourish it, it will spring forth something. But if it if it's a watermelon seed and the Lord told you to plant another seed and you end up getting that watermelon, you know, fruit from that, you know, a uh, watermelon, that's not what the Lord told you to bring forth, then guess what? It's not right. It's not going to bring forth and produce what it need to bring forth and produce. You see what I'm saying? I can't tell you to, to bear an olive tree. Uh, I'm telling you to bring forth an olive tree, bear an olive tree, but you bring it here, you bring me a, a, a lemon tree. You see what I'm saying? And that's not right. It's not what God calls you to do. So therefore, you won't be fruitful and multiply in that area. And a lot of things that and, and a lot of things that cause us to be unfruitful and not multiply is that we have bitterness in our hearts. Hallelujah. You may be doing the work of the Lord. You may be doing exactly what God called you to do. But if you have bitterness, it's gonna cause you to, for, to not uh uh, to bear fruit and multiply. It's going to cause you to be stuck. It's going to cause you to go to that dryness in this area where you're bitter, in this area where you're sour, in this area where you got uh, heaviness from, from uh, unforgiveness in you. You're unrepentant. You're living in willful sin. You're committing adultery. You're masturbating. You're, you're committing fornication. You're lying. You're cheating. You're, you're stealing. You're doing all of these different things that the word of God is against. But yet and still you think that you're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. No, you may reap something, but it's not going to be the season. It's not going to be what you, it's not going to be what you expect. Excuse me. It's not going to be what you expect to reap. You see what I'm saying? So you're looking forward to, to bring forth this olive, olive but you have brought forth the lemon. You see what I'm saying? So we have to make sure what we do is in line with the word of God, is in line with what Christ has set for us in our own life, in our own purpose, in our own season. Some people, God have called you to ministry. You know what I'm saying? God have called you to be a prophet. And yes, you're trying to be a bishop or you're trying to be an in, in, uh a uh, uh, apostle or uh, walking out, you know, out trying to be an evangelist. Not saying we're not supposed to evangelize. All of us do that, but there are certain callings that mandated on certain people's life. We're gifted to uh, to evangelize or, or to do X, Y, and Z. We have to walk in that what God have called us to walk in, so we can be fruitful and multiply. So these are some things that can cause us to be fruitful and multiply some things that can cause us to be unfruitful and not multiply when we're walking outside of the will of God, outside of his purpose and what he called us to do. We can be unfruitful and not multiply. But when we're living and doing right and doing what God has told us to do, specifically following his instructions, then we can be fruitful and multiply. But like I said, again, we can be doing all things, but at the same time, we're saying, Lord, I'm doing what you called me to do, but yet and still, I'm not growing. I'm not fruitful. I'm not multiplying. Uh, things are not being added to me as you said it was. Then we have to go back and examine ourselves and see why we're not being fruitful and multiplying, seeing why certain things are not being brought al alive or, uh, 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 you know, prospering in our lives. Because you're doing the unnecessary thing, or because you won't let certain things go that you have hoped up in your heart, or certain, certain you know, uh, certain people that you won't forgive, or certain things that God have called you to do that you're not willing to humble yourself and do. So you're unrepentant, and that thing can cause you to be stifled, Keep that fruit to not flourish and grow and birth forth what God is calling us to bring forth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So, yeah, uh, verse 10 says, see, I have I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. So this is what the Lord let Je Jeremiah know that he have called him for. This is your purpose, Jeremiah. This is your purpose, Jeremiah. And this is what the Lord told him. This is your purpose, Tanisha. Uh, Nick, that would, you know, this is your purpose. You know, this is what you're supposed to do. You see what I'm saying? And so, some people are just walking in an unbalanced model or unbalanced way. You see what I'm saying? And, and that's not going to bring or produce much fruit or no fruit at all. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes we look from this aspect and we see that, Lord, well, I'm doing exactly what you called me to do. And I'm examining myself. You see what I'm saying? I'm examining myself and seeing why. 
this or that is not taking place like I would like it to. But the Lord is saying, I have set you here at this specific time, in this specific way, and this is the way I want you to be fruitful and multiply in this season. Everybody is not going to lean to you. Everybody is not going to see you. I have you hidden in a set place. I have you right where I want you to. So don't think that it's because you're not seeing what you desire to see, that you're not bearing fruit, that you're not multiplying. I have you hidden. I have you set apart. I have you for this uh, set of people. I have you side up in this way for this purpose. And when due season, I will call you forth and you will reap bondifully. You are reap bondifully in that season where I am calling you to reap bondifully. You are multiplying. Things are being added to you, but I'm building you. I'm building you up in the spirit. I'm building you up in the kingdom. I'm adding things to your to your spiritual home. To your, you know, I'm adding. I'm adding to you, and I'm subtracting some things to you. Hallelujah! And in the process, I'm also pruning you so I can bring forth that fruit in this season. So there can be a multiple multiplication in the next season. You see what I'm saying? So, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord, hallelujah. <clears throat> Jesus, receive what he's saying in Jesus' name. Receive from the Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So some people, uh, operate and this is first corinthians 12 uh 3 through 11 some people operate let me read this let me read this just in case the lord you know therefore i make known to you that no one speak that no one speaking by the spirit of god calls jesus a curse and no one can say that jesus is lord except by the holy spirit there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. So there are differences in ministries, but the same Lord. You may not be called, you know, to the same uh, ministry as I'm called to, or the same anointing that is on my life. It may not be on your life. You see what I'm saying? Or the vice versa. So your ministry may be, you, you know, God may have you set up in a salon somewhere and you, you know, you do have, you minister to, to those in the salon. Okay. You may work at McDonald's or somewhere and you minister to, to those at McDonald's. It's not always that you have a platform in somebody's church somewhere that you're going to be able to minister in. You see what I'm saying? Your ministry is whatever, you know, God have placed you at. Whatever God have set up for you, that's your ministry. And also ministry, if you are married, you have your own family, rather, you know, Single when you came to Christ and with kids, that is your first ministry. Your family is your first ministry. You see what I'm saying? So minister to those in your own house, not just with the word, but with your action and loving it and, 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 you know, and prepping and preparing your family and doing what you need to do around the house. Amen. And so there are different ministries. So uh, a lot of people not birthing or bringing fruit, fruit or multiplying in that area that they're seeking to multiply in because there may be some hindrance there. That may be the reason why you're not bearing up and, and bringing forth it uh, there. But the same Lord, verse 6, and diversities of, of activities, but it's the same God who works all and in all, and who works all in all. But the man manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the spirit, through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works. All these things distributing each one individually as he wills. And you see what I'm saying? So the Holy Spirit, 
depart thee gifts, depart thee callings upon whom he desired to depart, whom he desired to give. You see what I'm saying? There are people that have gifts that they are actually sitting on. They won't even work. They won't even do anything with the gift that they have. And the Lord said that what you have will be taken away from you because you're not using it. You're not going out and doing anything with the gift I have given you. It's not for you to sit down on and you expect for you you expect to multiply and be fruitful and you're not going to multiply and be fruitful in the way that you expect because you're sitting down on that gift you're sitting down on that telling you sitting down on the thing that i have given to you i birthed this in you before you were formed in your mother womb i gave it to you and yet you decide to sit down on it and not bring forth its fruit woe unto you in jesus name Galatians, uh, Galatians 6, 7. Be not, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap. Uh, he who sows to the, to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the, to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life let it not grow weary in well doing for indeed in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart if we do not faint or something like that uh, so don't sit down on the gifts of God because these gifts are not given only for you these gifts and calling are given you know, for other people. So you can, other people, that's how you bring forth, be fruitful and multiply. It, the, it is for people. You see what I'm saying? It's for the edification of the body. And if for those who are lost, they would come in sharing the word of God, spreading the word of God, hallelujah, and making disciples, that being fruitful and multiplying in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ministering the gospel. You see what I'm saying? Laying hands on the sick. Hallelujah. Some of y'all got gifts of healing and, and all these different gifts, but y'all are too lazy and you question yourself. Lord, is there really the gift that you have given me? You questioning yourself. Therefore, you can't bring, bring fruit and multiply. You cannot come forward. You cannot spring forth because you're second guessing the gift that God has placed on you. Rather, it gives the healing world of knowledge, discerning the spirits or whatever. God has given y'all different gifts and y'all send down on these gifts and question and, and say and guessing and questioning God. God knew what he was doing when he gave you the gift. Don't worry about the mockery of man because these people got to worry about God themselves. You go out and operate as God have called you to. And yes, there are some who have left and went too soon and that's why they are stagnated. Though they may look and appear to be prospering, they're not prospering in Jesus' mighty name. They're not prospering in Jesus' name. They're stuck and in a standstill spiritually. They're still born in the spirit because they have went too soon and not have, they have not obeyed and waited on the voice of God to see what the calling truly was. Not seeing and sitting and waiting what the instruction was for their lives. They have not spent time with the Holy Ghost long enough. They have not spent time to hear the voice of God. So now they going out and leading other people astray or hurting people along the way because they have went too soon prematurely and God is saying come back my child that I may teach you that I may take time and go over this word with you go over this inscription go over the direction with you because you have went too soon you heard one thing and went too went too soon you have went ahead of you have went ahead now I'm calling you back to come back and sit before me that I may give you the right word for you go out and hurt somebody else with the word. Praise the Lord. And so sometimes people don't bear the fruit that they're looking to bear. Sometimes people not multiplying and bearing the fruit, being fruitful and multiplying because they're moving too soon and have not moved at all. But yet you, you're looking for something and expect to reap something, but you're not going to reap anything. 1 Corinthians 3, 7. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters. But God gives the increase. 
Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So we are planters of the gospel. We go and plant the seeds. We go out and minister. We go out and do what God called us to do. That's how we be fruitful and multiply. But if you're not doing that, if that planter, that workman, if not doing their job, you can't expect to get paid the necessary pay or get paid at all if you're not going out and working and working and planting in the fields, making a harvest, you know, uh, uh, out there sowing and, and, and working the fields and, and you think you're going to receive some type of harvest. No, that's just like a farmer. If he go out and plow that field and he thinks, just because he don't plow that field, that he don't did the work that he's supposed to be did. If you don't go out there and sow that seed, then how you expect to reap from no reap of just because you don't uh, plow the field, but you have not put the seeds down. You have not went out there and watered and took care of the seeds, have not checked on them and, you know, took the time to nourish them. But how do you uh, expect to receive some kind of crop or receive some kind of fold when you have not took the time and did the job, but you did that one little job. You did that one little thing. You think you over with. You think it all said and done. And you think that you're going to reap the benefits of your labor and, and thinking it's going to be good. No, it's it not going to be what you expected going to be in Jesus name. So stop selling for less. Wow. Second Corinthians nine. Okay, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Glory, hallelujah. But this I say, who, who, he who weeps sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as purpose in his heart, not gradually, not of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Wow. Then we just, we just read that. So a lot of times we may be doing everything. We may be doing all of this. But when God speaks to you about giving, when God touched your heart about, you know, giving, not just monetarily giving, you see what I'm saying? But when God tell you, you know, give your time. You know what I'm saying? Give your quality time. Give a listening ear. You see what I'm saying? Help your neighbor. Help your, your friend. Help that family. Help that lady at the grocery store. Help that, that, per, that man at the gas pump. Help that homeless man out there on the street. Uh, uh, help your pastor them, whoever it may be. Help them. But you stingy and you cleanse tight to that. Uh, God telling you to give to him. Give him all of your heart. Give him all of you. You see what I'm saying? But we won't give to God. We won't let God have all of us. We want to let God have a little piece of us. We want to let God have 98% of us and 99% of us, but we keep the 1%. We have to let God have all of us. And when you let go and let God have all of you, you will reap bountifully. You will reap plentifully. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So you decide in the name of Jesus when he send you forth to go out there and reap the harvest. You will be fruitful and you will multiply. Because you have sold everything out to God. You have given God all you have in Jesus' name. So you don't have nothing to cling to. Hallelujah. But you have let go and let God. You have followed the will of God. Therefore, you will reap what you plant. You will reap and you will reap bountifully. Hallelujah. You will be blessed beyond your measure. You will go before great kingdoms and great nations in the name of Jesus. And you will proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. And you will obey the voice of the God of the voice, the voice of the Lord and blood will not be upon your hand. Because once you have given it all to God, you're going to obey God rather than man. In Jesus' name. So, therefore, you won't be stingy towards your neighbor. In Jesus' name. You won't have unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. In Jesus' name. Because you will be thankful because he has forgiven you. Hallelujah. Once you open up to God, he can open up to you. In Jesus' name. The Lord say, draw nigh unto me and I draw nigh unto you. But we first got to draw closer to him in order for the Lord to draw closer to us. In Jesus' name. That's just like you meet somebody on the streets and you... You know, standing beside that person, you want to be their friend. You want to talk to them. 
You don't, you know what I'm saying? And maybe they want to talk to you. But if you don't open your mouth and you don't say nothing to that person, you don't never know that soul could have been saved. Or you don't never know the friendship that could have been made. You see what I'm saying? Or you'll never know what God would have used that person for to bring forth in your life, to bring forth that fruit, you know, that, that need to be brought forth and multiply. You see what I'm saying? But first you got to learn how to depart your mouth. First you got to learn how to be about the father business. And I'm talking about myself too in all that I am saying in Jesus mighty name. Because we got to be obedient in all things. We got to follow Christ and let go in all things. Let go of your, your uh, thinking. Let go of the way of the world. Let go of that thing that is hidden in your heart. That thing that you are covering in Jesus mighty name. And speak forth and declare the word of the Lord. Not just with your mouth but with your life that you can bring forth the fruit of the Lord Jesus Christ upon your life in Jesus name hallelujah praise you the Lord glory hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah eight I mean Luke eight five Luke eight five a soil went out to sow his seed and now he see uh, as he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was trampled down and the it will trample down and the birds of the air dev, uh, devoured it you see what i'm saying lord have mercy let it not be us in jesus name let it be obedient let it walk in the will of the lord jesus christ hallelujah see sometimes we're stagnated because we're trying to work in our own works hallelujah hallelujah we're trying to work in our own works hallelujah but lay and rest in the grace of God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. So faith causes you to produce the work of God. Hallelujah. Works don't produce, works alone don't produce faith. Works alone don't produce anything. But faith by works. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't say I'm just going to leave that alone, but glory be to God. I just want to say, be fruitful and multiply. Hallelujah. Go to the Lord and see why it is that you're not being fruitful and multiplying. In Jesus' name, Lord, show me myself. Lord, show me why I'm not being fruitful and multiplying, why I'm feeling dry, why I'm feeling discouraged, why I'm feeling low, why I feel like I'm not going forward, Lord. Where is it, oh God? Where is it in my field, God, that I need to go back and look over and see what, what have I sown that don't need to be there? What have I said that didn't need to be there? What, what have I laid that I didn't need to lay? Lord, show me the fruit of my labor. In Jesus' name, that I may repent, that I may get it right, that I may let go, Lord. Show me the fruit of my.